Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a side-by-side -side comparison between the RadioMaster TX16S and the FR Sky Tyrannus X9D+. Looks like it's time for out with the old, in with the new. Time has come for me to part with my trusty Tyrannus radio and give myself an upgrade. This RadioMaster TX16S is an offshoot of the Jumper T16 radio. They're very similar radios, very similar feature and functionality sets. The TX16 though is a second revision that was delivered after the Jumper T16. So they learned a lot in that first revision and put in some upgrades that people really wanted to have. Not the least of which is a charging port down here on the bottom. So it's got a USB-C charging port right there. The SD card is accessible from the bottom as well, although you probably need some fingernails or a tool to get that out. And it's got a couple of UARTs down here at the bottom as well that can be used for things like flight controllers and external GPSs and crazy things like that. The primary reason I decided to go with the RadioMaster TX16 is that it is based on OpenTX. And the Tyrannus, of course, is based on OpenTX. So because of that, I don't have to completely relearn a brand new radio system. The DNA in the RadioMaster is very similar to the DNA in the Tyrannus. Yes, some things moved around, but if you know how to program a Tyrannus, learning to program the TX16S will be very simple. It's a, it's a small jump. The other reason that I went for this radio is because of the multi-protocol options. And this is the only bad thing I'm gonna say about FR Sky, but they went into this access protocol and with access it's encrypted, which means everybody else is blocked out. And to me, that is kind of a little bit of a slap in the face given that the radio itself relies on OpenTX and it has for years. And one of the main drivers to pull people into the Tranus ecosystem was that OpenTX because of the development that went on and the capabilities that exist in that software. And what does Fersky do? They turn around and slap a proprietary encrypted protocol between the transmitter and receiver. And basically they tell the open source community, take a hike. <laughs> So due to Fersky's choice of abandoning the open protocols and allowing interoperability with their systems and other devices, I've made a choice to move away from them because I just personally, I don't like that behavior. All right, let me tell you a little bit about what I plan to cover in this video and what I'm not going to cover. What I'm not going to cover are the fundamentals about moving models around and using companion and how to back up your firmware, or update your firmware. And it's not because I don't know how, I've already done all that on my radio. The reason I'm not going to cover all that material is because there's a channel out there called Painless360 and I'll put a link in the description to his channel and he does a really nice job showing people how to do that kind of work. I don't really feel a need to reinvent the wheel and duplicate his effort. It just seems kind of pointless to me when, when I watch his material and I know that it's sufficient to explain what needs to be done. There's just no reason for me to go through it. So, so for that reason, I'm not going to bother. But I will put a link in the description of his channel. Make sure you check him out. He puts out really good material on navigating OpenTX. What I am going to do, though, because I haven't seen really good material on this out there on YouTube, is I'm going to give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the Tyrannus and the TX16S. So in case you're thinking about making a jump, you can see physically what's different between the two. Okay, let's get into the side-by-side -side comparison. And the 800-pound gorilla in the room obviously is a screen. I'm gonna turn these both on and let you look at the screens. And right out of the gate, you can see one of the key advantages that the TX-16 has over the Tyrannus, and that's that it's a much bigger screen and it's full color and it's highly configurable. The screen has what they call widgets, so you can go and set up these screens to show you the things that you want to see when you're flying a particular model. And they may be different. You know, if you're out there flying FPV, you might want to see things like your outputs or telemetry. And if you're flying sport, you might just care about a flight timer and a picture of the model. So there are different things that you can display. And I think, I, I mean, I got to give them props for that on OpenTX. That was a great choice. Okay, for physical comparisons, you can see that the Tyrannus radio is a little bit shorter than the TX-16 but not a lot and it but it's, in terms of weight the tyrannus and this is one of the concerns i had because if you ever fly 
cheap radios. They feel flimsy and light. I like my radios to feel sturdy. I wear a neck strap anyway, so weight is never a problem for me, but I like them to feel sturdy, and the Tyrannus does. It absolutely feels sturdy. I'll admit, though, that I have an upgraded battery in the back. I've got like the, I don't know, the 2700 milliamp hour from Aloft Hobbies. I have that on the back, and I also have this leg stand. So they add a little bit of weight, but the Tyrannus definitely feels stout. The good news on the TX-16 is it also feels stout. It doesn't feel like a cheap, flimsy, plastic, you know, ready to fly radio that you get when you buy those cheap, cheap radios. This one feels substantial. So it feels very good in the hands. And I know that there are some discussions out there. There's even some 3D print objects where you can put a spacer in between the gimbal and the face plate um, to move the stick down if you want. But I don't know. I think it feels okay to me. Maybe they are a little tall. I don't know. It, maybe they are a little tall. I might, I might investigate that. Uh, the gimbals, they are Hall Effect gimbals. So just like my Tyrannus, which I put in the M9 Hall Effect gimbals, this one came with Hall Effect gimbals from the factory, and it also has a touchscreen, although OpenTX hasn't enabled the touchscreen. Those are the primary physical characteristics. Let's talk a little bit about the controls and knobs. The toggle switches feel about the same. I don't really feel any, I can't, there's no tactile difference in these toggle switches to me. The Tyrannus has these really nice aluminum pot knobs if you can see that or not. They're real nice. They're, they just, they, they feel nice. The TX-16 uses a plastic knob, so not quite as nice. I mean, it does the job. It's not like there's a function problem. It does the job, but it just doesn't feel as premium as the Tyrannus does. And then the other big discussion point out there is the sliders. I use the sliders pre predominantly for flaps and gear on sport planes and pan and tilt on FPV planes. So the sliders on the Tyrannus have always been exceptionally good. They feel perfect. There's, there's no reason to make a change. It's a big discussion point on this, on this jumper radio that the sliders feel a little loose. Personally, I don't really think it's a big deal. They are a little bit looser. They don't quite feel as hydraulic as the Tyrannus sliders, but to me, they feel fine. You know, there's a, people always talk about, well, what if you bump it? Well, I mean, you're flying a plane, you probably should know not to bump things, but whatever. I mean, to each his own. I don't have a problem with them the way they sit, so I probably won't fool with them too much. I think they're fine, to be honest. I, I don't know what all the noise is about. Just, I just don't. <laughs> As far as thickness goes, there's a look straight down from the top. I don't think there's anything material there that you can that would matter in terms of holding the radio. When I grip the two radios side by side, I like if I close my eyes and grab both of them, I can't, I can't really tell you that one feels materially different than the other. They feel just fine. One thing the TX-16 does have that the Tyrannus doesn't, if you look at the back, the Tyrannus is just plastic, and the TX-16 has these bump grips that but the grips on the back are, are really good your fingers rest very naturally in that spot in fact when I'm holding the radio I'll probably that's probably what I'll do but they feel they feel very natural is my point yeah this is like a index finger stop up here on that spot the radio feels very natural and I do now that I now that I hold it and think about it these do feel like they're a little tall to me I, I do understand that concern on the Tyrannus yeah they definitely feel lower they definitely feel lower on this radio but I don't, again, I, it's not like, you know, I don't sit there and go, oh, I can't fly that piece of junk now. And then the one other thing that I'll definitely do, and I think this is a very subjective thing, is I'll adjust my tensions because while these feel okay, um, they're a little loose for my liking. So I, just like I did on my Tyrannus, I'll probably increase the tension on the throttle stick just a little bit and, and probably on the elevator and ailerons just a little bit. But it's not terrible and the adjustments are available inside the radio. My closing thoughts on the issues are that the Tyrannus definitely has better sliders. There's no doubt about that. The pots, I don't really think the pots matter that much. In fact, there's the Tyrannus pots are probably a little too resistant to me and the TX-16 actually feel, to me, they feel a little better actually. They're a little easier to turn. So I think they feel, to me, they feel a little bit better. These the knobs themselves are nice, but it's they're harder to turn. Okay, that wraps up my side-by-side -side comparison of the Tyrannus X9D Plus and the Radiomaster TX16S. I hope you found the information useful, and if you did, I would definitely appreciate your subscription. And don't forget to hit the notification bell at the bottom so when new material hits the channel, you're notified about it. 
And for those of you who've already subscribed to the channel, I appreciate you. Please keep up the comments, the thumbs up, the thumbs down. Just interact with the video and that always helps with placement. So I appreciate your efforts there. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. And right off the, right off the, right out of the gate.